Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Yeshua said my name. I wanted to do a rather uh, breaking news video. Or maybe some of you have already heard this. This might be old news to you. But for those of you who don't know, um, I recently found out doing my research and my study because uh, uh, I follow the news daily on the papacy and their interaction with Jerusalem uh, and even in connection with uh, rebuilding the third temple. Uh, the Pope is set to visit Jerusalem in September and it is going to be an interfaith gathering and I'll read you the dates here on September 4th to the 23rd of 2016, which is next month. A major event will occur in the old city of Jerusalem. It will bring together actors, artists, musicians, and persons in media from around the world. What on earth are they planning to do in Jerusalem at an event that ends on September 23rd that will bring together celebrities and public figures? Leaders from Roman Catholic, Muslim, and Jewish communities will gather for one of the largest and longest interfaith services in world history, right in the old city of Jerusalem. Now, this is, I'm going to stop here for a second. This is just my opinion being interjected here. Uh, I truly believe that one of the reasons for a push, especially in Jerusalem, the old city of Jerusalem, for this interfaith movement and ecumenism is to prepare people for the building of the third temple, the physical third temple, uh, where the Antichrist will uh, finally, the final man of sin will be revealed and proclaim himself God to the world. And it wouldn't surprise me um, if whoever this is that causes the abomination of desolation in this third temple proclaims himself to be the Prince of Peace. Remember, Daniel says that he will exalt himself above all that is called God. Uh, the names of blasphemy that he chooses reaches to the high heavens. But one of the reasons I feel that this interfaith movement is in the old city of Jerusalem is to prepare these three uh, faiths, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, uh, for the acceptance of a temple that will be built to appease not only the, the world's three major religions, but the world community at large and bring together at this one world religion. Uh, Satan knows his time is short. He knows that he's only got a certain amount of time to work with to uh, get this one world religion started. So I just wanted to interject my opinion. This interfaith movement in Jerusalem could be part of that plan to sort of prepare people mentally and emotionally over there in these three faiths to accept a third built temple. And it has been said that the Pope, and I can read you, um, find you articles on this, that even uh, leaders in this country have said that the papacy in Rome would be a perfect neutral third party to govern such an interfaith area where a temple would be built in the old city of Jerusalem. So let me continue here. The service will combine the three monotheistic faiths under one roof in a house of worship for all believers. Notice they're calling them all believers, whether you're Jewish, Christian, or Muslim. Okay, one part of the event will occur on September 5th to 11th and will bring together Jew, Muslim, and Christians under a passion for Jerusalem, this is in quotes, in which they will coexist temporarily under the wings of the Almighty. Isn't that interesting? Coexist. There's that term coexist again. Another part will occur September 12th through the 23rd. The leaders of this event, called the Mecca Deshet, will perform an 11 day consecration. This is not good and may signal the beginning of the one world religion that Pope Francis has been working so hard to achieve in 2016. The Vatican is one of the chief proponents of the ecumenical movement around the world and in Israel. For the past three years, Pope Francis has worked tirelessly toward a new world religion in which all denominations are brought together as one. If you look at Francis' outreach over the past three years, and specifically in 2016, you'll find somebody who has openly condemned evangelical Christianity and a belief that you must have a personal relationship with Jesus. Remember, the Pope is quoted as saying, and you can look this up, that it's dangerous to assume that, that a person can approach Jesus face to face in a personal relationship because Satan has it set up that you have to go through the papacy in Rome, that he is your advocate, or a priest in a Catholic church is your advocate, or you pray through Mary. Uh, we are taught that we have access to God through one spirit, the Holy Spirit, uh, that lives in us, and that we are given boldness to approach the throne of grace. There is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. So he actually is quoted as saying, that it's dangerous to have a personal relationship with Jesus. Satan is speaking. Just remember, he'll look like a lamb and speak the words of the dragon. This is what's going on here. And remember, all these evangelical leaders that are going to uh, the Vatican, I I've done videos on this. 
these pastors and teachers and leaders, these televangelists that people used to consider trustworthy are now bowing to the whore of Babylon from Revelation 17. But don't, don't be troubled. This was prophesied to happen, and God chose to put you at this time in history to see these things. So it's also an exciting time. The extent of Francis's outreach to other denominations and religions in 2016 has been mind-boggling. In February, Francis held an emergency meeting with Patriarch Kirill of Russia for the first time since the uh, 1054 schism. Francis has also reached out to Patriarch Bartholomew of Turkey, in which both leaders voiced support for migrants and called for more migrants to enter Europe. In May, Francis met with Al-Hazar of Egypt, who is the head of, the Sunni, head of Sunni Islam. In January 2016, Francis names the third pontiff, is the third pontiff to visit Rome's major synagogue. In June, he outreached to the Arminians. In July, Francis was the driving force behind a ceremony in the U.S. called Together, organized to bring all Christians in front of a, yeah, get this, a 6,660-inch 6, obelisk uh, of Osiris for worship. And of course, we know that the Washington Monument, which I've covered for you before, is Freemasonic. It has e, uh, it, it's Egyptian Freemasonic symbology. Okay, let me see here. And of course, Osiris uh, is associated with Ra. Um, the Ouroboros, it's, uh, that's something else that was in the Together 2016. The Ouroboros is an occult symbol of a snake. It's, it's a round snake eating its tail. Um, so if you type in Ouroboros, it's spelled O-U-R-O-B-O-R-O-S. It's a cult, and it, it's associated with Osiris and his son Ra, um, the, the legend of the Ouroboros. And, and you can look that up. That's a video for another time. But that was one of the symbols purported to be at the Together 2016. Okay, the Ouroboros represents uh, uh, also an end of an end of an era, an end of a um, an end of time or an older age, like the end of an age and beginning of a new age. In occultism, the end of an eon or the end of time uh, usually results in a reset brought about by some cataclysmic event. Okay, on and on and on. All right. Just recently, Francis has used the death of one of his priests in France, which we all heard about, to invite Muslims into Christian cathedrals for worship. Now, is this not the harlot of Revelation 17 in bed with all these other religions that deny that Jesus Christ is the almighty God, God in the flesh? Mm. So I want to go on and read you a couple other articles about this, uh, this meeting coming to Jerusalem. Okay. All right, I have a picture here for you. New spiritual gathering, it says, to bring Christians, Jews, and Muslims together in Jerusalem, a new interfaith and spiritual gathering of Christians, Jews, and Muslims taking place in Jerusalem this September. So I wanted to show you this picture here. And, of course, Babylon is written all over the front of that. Okay. What I'm doing here in this channel is trying to prove to you from Scripture and compare it to modern-day news that the horror of Revelation 17 is none other than the Vatican in Rome, dressed in purple and scarlet, holding a golden cup of abomination. That city is sitting on seven hills. Daniel said the prince that shall come will come from those who destroyed the city and the temple. This was the second temple that stood in Jerusalem. The Romans under Titus destroyed the second temple. This prince that shall come, is he being revealed now in our time? Amen, a house for, of prayer for all believers is what it's going to be called. So you're, you're a believer. If you're Muslim, Jew, or Christian, you're just all considered children of God, he said, and a believer. Part of the 2016 Mecca Duchette Festival from September 4th to 23rd is an initiative to bring together the world's three major faiths who share a belief in one God and a boundless love for Jerusalem to dialogue, study, sing, and pray together in one temporary house of worship set a press release. Now, one house of worship to bring together these three major faiths. This, this, of course, is not the third temple yet, but like I stated earlier, is it plausible that part of this Jerusalem visit from the Pope to bring these three faiths together, the world's three major monotheistic faiths together, is the preparation in the hearts and minds of people to be ready for the third temple to be built? So, the, so that the Pope literally can take Christ's place on earth, so he thinks, and bring about world peace and a world religion. Remember, Jesus said, do not suppose I come to bring peace on the earth, I come to bring a sword. There is a sword of division being drawn be between those who will stand with Christ and his doctrine only, and those who will align themselves with the papacy in Rome. 
Satan will make it look good on the outside. It's all love. See, everyone's coming together. No, an enemy will comfort you with lies. A friend will wound you with the truth. And that's what this video is all about. There is no, and the article goes on to say, there's no union between the Prince of Light and the Prince of Darkness, and there can be no union between their followers. It's like Paul went on to say, and I'll read you another article here, that what fellowship does light have with darkness? Remember, Satan, it says in the scriptures, masquerades as an angel of light, and so do his ministers. They don't look like wolves. They don't look evil. They're going to come looking godly on the outside, but deny the power thereof. And here's another interesting thing that I found from, it's a website called catholicbridge.com. And this Catholic website admits that Rome wants to move to Jerusalem. And I've got proof right here. It's from catholicbridge.com. And you, you can look up that source yourself if you want. Why the Catholic Church believes the Vatican and, uh, you know, the, 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 the Roman Curia, the Jesuits, they all want to move the Pope's... Um, leadership to Jerusalem. Okay, it says, why does the church want to move uh, from Rome to uh, Jerusalem? It says right here, the new Jerusalem of Revelation they're talking about here. Um, moving to Rome from Jerusalem makes sense. Jerusalem has always been in turmoil. Here, let me see if you can read that. Now, that's from the same Catholic site. Moving to Rome to Jerusalem makes perfect sense since Jerusalem has always been in turmoil. And the article goes on to say how um, it believes that the Pope could make a difference. Again, it's come from major leaders even in our country saying, and you can YouTube this, you can Google it, that they believe the papacy in Rome would be the perfect answer to be a neutral third party to govern a third temple in Jerusalem for to bring interfaith and bring peace. So it says moving to Rome from uh, I'm sorry, moving from uh, from Rome to Jerusalem. Makes sense. Jerusalem has always been in turmoil, the article says. From a clearly practical standpoint, we can't possibly imagine how the church could have succeeded with the Pope in Jerusalem. Jerusalem has been in a constant state of turmoil and has been conquered many times. Jerusalem was under Islamic rule for many centuries since the time of Christ. All right, and it goes on to say here that um, moving the Pope to Rome may be the answer. Again, I'll put that up for you again. Moving... Um, from Rome to Jerusalem makes perfect sense. All right, let me go on to the other article here. Okay. All right. Let's see if I can find you. I'm sorry, I'm skipping articles here. I'm trying to move quickly. Okay, and here we have, I'm sorry for the delay, here we have a, um, a cardinal here, his name is Cardinal Tauron, T-A-U-R-A-N. This is from News That Matters, uh, exposing fake and falsehood. The Vatican will rule in the old city of Jerusalem one day. The answer is to have the global community relegate the sites and its favors handing the task to a large group of states. So I wanted to show you the Vatican will rule the old city of Jerusalem. I truly believe that this is where the false prophet slash antichrist uh, will set up uh, what they call a neutral third party intervention uh, because already the Pope, believe me, Satan knows what he's doing working through the papacy, the, the dynasty, the papacy through the centuries to build this ecumenical movement, to build trust among Muslims and Hindus, um, you know, Sunnis and Shiites. And I mean, he's, there, there's a work going on here by the enemy behind the scenes that looks good on the outside but on the inside it's evil. It's, it's denying the doctrine of Christ. Uh, Pope Francis has come out to say not only that is it dangerous to have a personal relationship with Jesus, that you should not access him directly yourself, um, but he's also stated that to even consider um, that uh, that to have a what, what does he call it um, to be to be uh, narrow-minded that your way is the only way is dangerous. He said. Well, Jesus said he is the only way. When did Jesus ever come preaching? to a Muslim or a Hindu when he walked this earth in the Gospels. You pointed out to me in the scriptures, those of you who disagree with this video, where did Jesus say in Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John that, oh, you can follow me, I'm one of the choices, but uh, Muslims and um, uh, Hindus and, and, and whatever pagan religion you want to call it, they're all just calling on me. I mean, I'm the same God, so it, it doesn't matter. All are welcome. No. Jesus said, I am the gate. 
I am the narrow way. And unless you come through me, you will die in your sin. That's what he said. And the Pope is preaching the opposite. Well, making it look like love, peace, and serenity. And this is the devil's tool. These are the words of Cardinal Jean-Louis Tehran, head of the Vatican's Council for Interreligious Dialogue. He wants the state of Israel to be evicted from its control of the old city of Jerusalem. See, they, the Vatican wants control of the old city, and I've already told you why in the beginning of this video. Peace negotiations in the Middle East must tackle the issue of the status of the holy sites. Well, they've already started to do that by giving the Pope the upper room and where he conducted mass by handing over David's tomb to the Vatican. When I was in Israel two years ago, there were Jews outside David's tomb weeping because of this, because they knew the Pope was coming that May when I was there, and that one of the sites that were being handed over to him was the tomb of David. And I saw the tears myself from the Jews about that. Okay. Although critics claim the question of responsibility for Muslim or Jewish sites, such as the Dome of the Rock or the Western Wall, would complicate already difficult peace talks. Tehran says not discussing it only puts the issue off. Uh, part, the part of Jerusalem within the walls with the holy sites of the three religions is humanity's heritage. See, this is what they are going to uh, um, remember. An enemy multiplies kisses. They're going to say that for humanity's heritage, for the peace of humanity, we need to bring these religions together and I will bring peace. So this vicar of Christ, this substitute for Christ on earth, with Christ, which Christ never left, he said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. He never left a substitute in his place. But all of this is to look good on the outside and bring the world together under this one world religion, which is authored by Satan. Okay, uh, the part of Jerusalem within the walls with the holy sites of the three religions is humanity's heritage. Doesn't that sound nice and pretty? It really sounds nice, doesn't it? Flowery on the outside. It's a lie. And it's kissing you with a lie instead of, instead of wounding you with the truth. As each has its roots there, he said, in reference to Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. Let's suppose that tomorrow part of Jerusalem belongs to a Palestinian state. One morning a group of fundamentalist Muslims could decide to build a mosque where the Holy Sepulchre stands, he added. The Vatican says the answer is to have the global community regulate sites and its favors handing the task to a large group of states rather than placing it in the hands of the United Nations, Security Council, or Europe. The sacred and unique character of the area must be safeguarded, and it can only be done with a special internationally guaranteed statute. Did you get that? The character, the sacred and unique character of the area must be safeguarded, and gee, we can only guess by who, and it can only be done with a special internationally guaranteed statute. Cardinal Torrin said, this internationally guaranteed statute, could it be that seven year, that he makes an agreement for seven years with the many? Could this, could this be what he's referencing and talking about here? Okay, the Vatican plans to make the old city of Jerusalem a special zone governed by a special regime. So you can type that in too, that's been verified, that the Vatican wants to be that special regime, that third neutral party that the world trusts to delegate the third temple or delegate this one world religion. Okay, this news report is yet another confirmation about the ongoing betrayal of Israel staged by the Holy See. Okay. What the Cardinal wants is uh, Vatican control over the Temple Mount. We who stand on the lessons from the Reformation will keep on warning others about the Pope. He is an Antichrist. The Pope will eventually set up his throne on the site of the Jewish temple and be presented as the Prince of Peace. Well, how hard is that to believe? He already calls himself the Holy Father. He's already taken God's name. Jesus said, many will come in my name, claiming I am he. And if someone says to me, well, Angie, Jesus never claimed to be the Holy Father. Yes, he did. As a matter of fact, he said, I and the Father are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. When I come, I will come in my Father's name and with his holy angels. To come in someone's name is claiming to be he. When Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, when they had that last supper together, Lord, show us the Father, what was Jesus' answer? Did he answer in a third person? He said, Philip, have I been with you so long that you don't know who I am? If anyone who has seen me has seen and known the Father. This is what he told Philip. In Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, it says, the child to be born, the son to be given, would be his name would be called what? The mighty God, singular, what? The Holy Father. So, 
Yes, Jesus did claim to be the Holy Father in the flesh. He who has seen me has seen the Father, he told Philip. So for a pope to sit in a, in, in a third temple and proclaim himself the Prince of Peace and take that title, uh, it, it's not outlandish. He already, he's already taken the name of the Father himself. So why wouldn't he call himself the Prince of Peace if he can bring about this one world religion? This is one of the names exclusively that belongs in worship to our Messiah, Jesus. The Pope is the man of lawlessness who has deceived billions of people into his blasphemies. Yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to read you some articles, um, give you some information about this, this uh, interfaith gathering that's coming to Jerusalem next month, actually in, in a few short days. Uh, give you some ideas on why I believe that this is happening. Um, it's happening at a rapid pace. And I believe that um, the Pope, um, uh, the, the Jesuit order, the papacy wants to prepare hearts and minds uh, to bring about the world's faith as one, okay, under his so-called neutral umbrella of protection, that neutral zone, that special regime, and to prepare people's hearts for the building of the third temple. I, I truly believe that. So anyway, this is hopefully, uh, if you didn't know about this next month in September, uh, with the Pope. Now you do. Maybe you can pass this video along and make other people aware. Uh, but uh, the horror of Revelation 17, uh, from what I believe God has shown me from the scriptures, is none other than the Vatican, that city on seven hills dressed in purple and scarlet. So this has just been a kind of a news update video for you. Uh, please do some more research about the Pope's visit to Jerusalem next month. And if you have any comments to add in the comment section that we could learn from, maybe you'll find some information that I haven't covered today. Uh, and, and connect it with prophecy, please do. I mean, we're here to learn from each other. So thank you for listening. God bless you and have a great day today.